Welcome to FT Markets. Talk about a lack of liquidity used to be reserved for corporate bond markets, in particular high yield debt. In the past few years, that conversation has started to filter into traditionally more liquid government bond markets, even US Treasuries. Now, it seems talk has gone one step further, infiltrating futures markets, and in particular, Bund futures. They're one of the key benchmark contracts in the Eurozone, a product a lot of people turn to precisely because it's meant to be a liquid alternative to cash bonds. Now, before trying to talk about liquidity in futures markets, it's important to explain exactly what liquidity is. And that isn't actually all that easy. Very simply, liquidity is the ease of buying and selling a certain asset, in this case, Bund futures. Traders tend to point to three key markers of liquidity, price, time, and size. If you can execute a large trade quickly and at a good price, then it's probably fair to say that a market is fairly liquid. If it takes you a long time to execute a large trade, and it also costs you a lot to do it, then that market is probably not so liquid. Recently, as German Bund yields have spiked and investors have flooded into futures markets to try and protect positions, there's been more emphasis placed on the depth of liquidity. What size trade can you do at a certain price? That's reduced significantly in recent years, according to banks and investors. Put another way, if you need to do a large trade, then you're probably going to get a worse price from the market than before. It might take you longer to find a counterparty prepared to trade with you, and once you execute, the market is likely to react more violently than it once would have. So how do we measure this? Well, there is no one measure of liquidity. If we look at this chart, we see that during the bout of turmoil in bond markets at the end of last month, volumes spiked in futures well above levels that we'd seen for most of the year. What we can likely take from this is that a lot of people rush to sell futures rather than selling their bonds. To some, this is a sign of liquidity, but a number of analysts say it's just misleading. Just because there was a lot of trading in bond futures doesn't mean the market performed well. In our second chart, we see the price of 10-year futures on German government bonds fell sharply during the sell-off. That's the blue line. At the same time, we see bid-offer spreads, the difference between the price of buying and the price of selling a contract, widen. That's the red lines that spike up. That indicates that as people rush to the market looking to trade, they couldn't put through much volume before prices started to deteriorate. But even this doesn't tell the whole story, because it doesn't actually tell us how much size can be done at a certain price, even a bad price. For that, traders turn to other metrics, such as an aggregate of the best bid offers on different days, and the size of the available trading at those prices. This is what a number of people in the market say performed poorly during the recent turmoil. And that's disconcerting, because futures are seen to allow investors an efficient way to quickly express a view. As liquidity begins to dry up, few alternatives remain. So why is this happening? Unsurprisingly, there are multiple factors that combine at any given time. But one key prevailing wind is the fact that banks have pulled back considerably from their role as middlemen in markets. There is a reduction in the risk appetite of banks, and so a reduction in the number of market makers willing to stand on the other side of large trades. Without alternative liquidity providers entering into the market, this may be the new norm, with traders having to get used to choppier, jumpy, more volatile markets. It's one thing to talk about a lack of liquidity in a high-yield corporate bond, quite another if that problem is impacting Bund futures as well.